Today's tutorial is going to be making a pop art portrait in Photoshop. Hi, my name is Mark Newton from the School of Photography and we're going to make a pop art portrait in Photoshop. It's a really easy, simple thing to do and you get really great effects, makes a great artist study if you're a student um, and here we go, I'm going to show you how to do it. So the first thing that you're going to need is a picture. You can use a picture of the internet or a picture of yourself and that picture needs to be in black and white. So here I've got a lovely photograph by the photographer George Harrell, he's a brilliant photographer and it's of Humphrey Bogard. Now the first thing you want to do is duplicate the layer so that we don't um, destroy our original picture. So you right click, right click on your layer, go to duplicate layer and we'll just call it background copy and click OK. I'm just going to move my layers up a little bit there like that, that's good. Now because we're doing the Andy Warhol screen print type pictures it can be rough, it doesn't have to be perfect and actually if it's rough and a little bit over the edge then it looks good. So we're going to use a quick mask to make the background white. Click on your quick mask option in the toolbox like that. I'm just going to use a pencil tool and I'm going to make my pencil size a bit bigger than that and you do that by pressing the bracket keys on your keyboard and it makes your brush bigger or smaller like that. I'm going to paint inside my model here, let's just take that brush size a little bit lower, paint inside my model here and like I said it doesn't matter if you go over a bit or under a bit because this is a pop art portrait and it will look nice if it's a bit rough. So I'm just going to do that like that. Now I want to fill the inside and the quickest way to do that is to use the paint bucket tool and just click on the inside like that and it fills it. Then if you press the Q key on your keyboard it gives you a selection of the outside of the mask that you just created. And then all I want to do is fill it with white. You go to Edit, Fill, from the drop down list, select White, click OK, and then I've now got a nice white background and my model in the foreground. Go select, deselect, and that will take your selection away. So when you've got your image like that, we need to turn the layer. Um, we need to turn the layers blend mode to multiply. So, in the layers palette, click on where it says normal and go to multiply like that. And then I'm just going to hide this bottom layer. Just hide that layer for now. And now you've got your image like that. You need to now make the uh, black and white image really contrasty. And but for this, I'm going to use a curve. So I'm going to go image adjustments curves move that out of the way and I'm going to give it a really harsh kind of S curve and I want some really bright patches like that and yeah that'll do and I can always adjust that later if I want to but for now I'm just going to leave it like that click OK and now I've got a nice contrasty uh, black and white image to work on and then we're going to add our colors into the image and I'm going to do that by using layers. Click the new layer icon in the layers palette. I'm going to drag it underneath the background copy there. Double click on the word and I'm going to name this background color. Background color like that. Okay and then I'm going to fill that background color with a colour. Edit, fill and from the drop down list click colour. Um, let's just have a nice green I think, a nice bright green up there. 
click OK, click OK again. And now I've got my background color. And then I'm gonna fill in the rest of the, the face, the clothes, the, the shirt with different colors in different layers. And you click new layer here again. This time I'm gonna, sorry, that wasn't supposed to happen. Click on the actual word. And I'm gonna name this one skin. And this time I'm just gonna use the paintbrush tool. The brush tool, click on your foreground color, which is here, and select a nice color. I'm gonna try and go for a rough skin color, I suppose. Uh, maybe something like that. And I'm gonna keep it light. It's best to use light colors, I think, when you're doing this tutorial. So I'm gonna use that color. I'm gonna zoom in a bit by pre pressing Control and the plus button. And I'm just gonna paint over where the skin is. Now what you need is actually a brush that's got a hard edge. And you just right click or command click. Where it says harshness there, I want it to be really hard. I'm gonna go right up to 100%. Click back on my screen, that's better. And now I'm just going to paint over everywhere where I see skin. And don't worry if you go over like this here. If I go over the hat and I, went, and I don't mean to do it, all I do then is select the eraser, change the brush size by pressing the bracket keys up and down, and I can erase that bit out there. Make it look all nice again. Go back to my brush tool, hold down the space bar and it brings up this hand and then I can move my screen around and just paint in where the skin is. And again, like I said before, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna make my brush size a little bit smaller. Go all the way around like that. Colour it in. And let's just zoom out for you. And now what I've got is the skin colour and the background colour. And I need to do the same now for the hat, the coat, the shirt, um, to create the pop art portrait. And then pretty much you're gonna do that with every separate part of your model. So I'm gonna do that. You don't wanna watch that, you'll be here forever. Uh, we're gonna fast forward to when I've got to the end. Okay, so I've just put the colour into other parts of the picture and I've left one little bit uh, till the end, which I like doing personally myself, and that's adding in um, white bits. So I'm gonna make a new layer and double click on the word again so you can rename it. I'm gonna name it white. Now, make sure that this layer is the top one of your colours, but it's still underneath your main image. And then I'm going to put some whites in the eyes on this one, actually. Paintbrush tool, click on your foreground colour, select white, click OK. Take my brush size down, and I'm just going to paint in where the eyes are. Let's do the same for the other side. And easy as that. Um, let's zoom out a little bit. So there's the whites of the eyes and there is also some white bits down here and down here. So I'm just going to do that and come back to you in a minute. Okay so now I'm back I've just put the white bits in and that's just something that I like doing personally myself. Now once you've got um, a nice picture that you like like that, save it as a JPEG. So you go File, Save As, and select JPEG from down here. Um, let's create a new folder actually because there's my other ones in there. And I'm gonna call this Humphrey Bogard 1. And I'm gonna click Save. 10's fine, I'm gonna click OK there. You also wanna save it as um, a Photoshop image. 
so that you can work on it again later. So the same thing again, file save as, this time select a Photoshop image, I'm going to put it in my new folder and I'm going to call it just Humphrey Bogard, uh, I'm going to call it a PSD so I know what one it is, click save, don't worry about this box, just click OK. So the beauty of doing them in different layers, different coloured layers, is you can really easily now change the colour of each layer and therefore saves different versions as many as you want to. I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to drag my layers palette out to here for now. And as you can see, here are all of my uh, layers. And I can click off of them one by one, all my coloured layers. And eventually you get back to the original image. So let's click on all of them again. And what you do is you double click on the layer, the layer style box comes up, click color overlay, click this little box here and select a new color. That's not bad that gray actually. I'm gonna do a lighter gray though, yeah, there. Click OK. And then do the same for the rest of your colored layers. This time let's have a nice light lilac -y kind of color like that. Click OK, click OK again. And again, you do it on all of the layers, so I'm just gonna do that and uh, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so I'm back and now I've created a totally different image, as you can see, totally different colors in the image. Again, file, save as, a JPEG and I'm going to call this Humphrey Bogard 2. I'm going to click Save and click OK again there. And you want to do that for four different versions and then I'm going to show you how to load them four versions into one picture in a really easy way. So I'm going to just do another two versions and I'll see you back in a minute. Okay, now I'm back and I have done four different versions of the Humphrey Bogard pop art. Um, I'm going to show you them all four. And here they are. That's the first one, second one, third, and fourth. Now, what I want to do is get all of them four into one picture so it looks like the multiple screen prints, like what Andy Warhol used to do. So I'm going to close that down now. I've already saved it as a PSD and I've already saved it as my JPEG so I don't really need to do anything else. So I'm just going to go, no, don't need to save that. Let's put my layers back where they belong. Move it over to the left. Now what you need to do is load them as a stack. So we go to File, Scripts, Load Files into Stack. Click on that. Browse for your files, and here they, all, here they all are. You have to find them, obviously. Select all the ones that you want, which is all them ones there. Click OK, click OK again, and Photoshop will load them into a stack for you. And there they are there. Now, you load them as a stack because you want to resize them all so they're exactly the same size. You need to select all of your layers, in your layers palette. I just hold the control or command if you're on a Mac and select them all. Then you want to free transform them, which is control or T, control command T or edit free transform. Hold down the shift key, get your cursor to the corner and resize them to about a quarter of the page. Um, I think something like that, a bit under the, a quarter of the page actually. That will do. When you're happy, press return or you click the tick at the top. Then what you do is you select each layer and you move them around into your, in your frame. Um, the easiest way to do it is to select the move tool and use your right click or command click to select each layer. So I'm going to right click and it's basically stacking your layers as they are. So that one's the top one and that one's the bottom one. So if I just select the top one, you can see in my layers palette that it's selected that. And I'm gonna move that down 
to the bottom and just come across a bit. Oh, that'll do for now. I'll sort the rest out in a minute. Right click here, select the next one, move that across. Right click here, select the next one, move it down like that. Now what I want to do is I want to have a little bit of gap around the edge. So I need to go to view, take it off of snap. Give myself a little gap there, like that. Select this one by right clicking. Give myself a little gap again, come across a little bit, that's fine. Right click, select the layer, come across. That's fine, come down. And as you can see, it will line up with your other pictures anyway. Just a bit like it does in uh, Microsoft PowerPoint, really. So that'll do there. Move it up slightly. Then I'm going to create a white background. Easy enough to do. New layer. Click on the new layers icon. Drag it to the bottom. So it's your bottom layer. Edit fill or shift F5. Select white. Click OK, and there I've got my four pictures with a nice gap in between them. Obviously, if you don't want the gap in between, you don't put the gap in between. So thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you want more free tutorials, subscribe to the YouTube channel, follow me on social media, and remember, learn more at the School of Photography.